I'd like to welcome you to this webinar about a re really cool product uh, called Blogly. Uh, my name is Tom Tate. I'm a uh, freelance writer and uh, for years have enjoyed creating content that people like to read. But I've run into a bunch of challenges over the years that Blogly seems to you know, be the answer for. And today I have the, uh, the pleasure of talking with the CEO and founder of Blogly, the gentleman who is uh, the mastermind behind it. And he's gonna give us an overview of just how Blogly works and how it can be a real boost for your uh, freelance uh, uh, career. So uh, let me introduce Gennady. Gennady, I'm gonna turn it over and let you talk about uh, Blogly to the people who are listening. All right, uh, thank you, Tom. So um, I will go over on a high level on, about the Blogly. And also just, uh, just a few words before I start uh, just about myself. Uh, I've been in the development of the software for the last uh, uh, almost five years. And uh, I've been um, created a number of applications online However, I noticed that the one part is missing that, uh, and it doesn't matter what the software you produce, you would need to create their, their traffic on your website. Uh, and to bring in traffic, you have to have a content. So this is how the idea of Blogly was born, that I wanna page, create a some page for myself uh, to get the content on my website. So I can create, a, I can create content easily uh, uh, somehow deal with the complexity of WordPress. Kind of, it's just my my thing about the WordPress. It's too complex, it's difficult to to work. It's so slow, clunky, and I just I just want to have a better system that helps with the content. All right. So I um, created the, some of the overview on the high level. So so far, uh, did I miss anything, uh, uh, Tom? Do you, so do you want me? Where do you uh, want me to start? You know what? Let's. I'm thinking about this. Uh, like I'm ready to get started. Uh, so show me how I would create my uh, article because that's really the basis of Blogly is the, well, actually the basis is even smaller than that, but let's talk about what steps uh, I would need to go through to create my first article in Blogly. Okay. Uh, other than having an account first. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. We'll I talk bypass, about that later. I bypass the creation of account. It's pretty standard. So uh, creation accounts, nothing new I can show. So basically, as you log in, you create an account. Once you create the account, the first, uh, uh, first uh, page that will show up, here I just try to uh, uh, just remove the other stuff. So basically, you would see something like that on okay. your, on your uh, preview. So this one is the primary page is the name is the article. It's in a subset of the my content. So we're gonna start discussing on the article page and you'll see how the article being created. Okay. So let me start from here. So it's very simple. You click on the new, uh, you give a name, let's say uh, test, uh, uh, test article. I give a name of the article. I can uh, select the folder. I can just uh, uh, write up the folder on the fly. Uh, in this particular case, I may create the folder uh, for the blog content for Blogly. And there are two different options that I can use the content types. Uh, by the way, not only the uh, blog is not only for the content for the uh, blog types, uh, uh, you can use it for pretty much for anything like summer research, the speech writing, the technical writing. But in our case, we just talk about the blog post. So there are multiple statuses here by default to select open. As soon as I click OK, I am in the inside the article. Now you can oh. see the blank space. There is nothing there. So now I can start creating uh, the, the content inside. Well, that's, that's very nice and clean. I like the uh, layout. Oh, so you. what is this blocks thing over uh, in the upper left or am I getting ahead of myself? Uh, yeah, the left side is uh, for blocks. Blocks basically it's a simple outline. This is your, like, uh, uh, every block is your chapter, or say a paragraph of your content. So you just simply uh, give a name of the block. Uh, let's say it's my introduction, or say I can call it intro. And when I click OK, I created the block. And now I'm inside of the block. 
and I have a rich text format. Uh, I can create uh, the any uh, formatting of the text. Uh, I can put the headers. Uh, I can change the styles. I can in, in, in the images. But basically, this is your writing application. Oh, uh, okay. Now it's now named as a as a craft, and I can just tell very simple uh, 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 controls here. You can go left and right between blocks, and also you can go back to the article level when you click here on the back. So basically, this approach of clicking on the left side arrow is used throughout the application. Okay. I noticed when you created the block, it said uh, something like an H2. Why, uh, why is it default to uh, H2? What does yeah. that do for me? So basically, by default, the name of the article is a H1. Is a, it's, it's the header, it's a tag of the HTML code. It's a tag and the article name is always the H1 header. Okay. All the blocks names are H2, very simple. So anything you create inside in the content will be all the H3 in below, like H3, H4, H5, H6, and the normal text. So anything in, inside the block is a normal text, and but you can change it, uh, but you cannot put any more H2s because H2 is reserved for block names. Okay, so that helps with uh, finding, if once you put it on your website, having more headings in your document means you're gonna get more visibility, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And actually, cool. uh, the, the, it's good for the Google search because the Google search are always searching in the headers uh, first. So the headers have the more meaning to the Google search. So basically, and plus the usually H2 headers, this is a, should be your block names. I mean, your, your paragraph names. So it's easy for visibility, easy for scanning of your article. Uh, so uh, it's pretty structured, pretty simple. So basically your header names are your H2 headers. Okay. So all uh, I have to do now is start writing. Is that the, yeah. uh, the So basically you start writing inside the block. Uh, so basically right now we created one block is intro and another block is actually systematically created as a name, as a table of content. I have a sentence here in my, uh, my setup that uh, says that table of content should be always created instantly, but I can actually change this by going into uh, the org details, uh, but I don't wanna get started about this. I'm just simply show here is if I wanna ge don't generate the table of content, I can just simply remove it and now I can see just one single block. That Got I it, oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. table no. of contents are a pain to make. So now if you want to go and start writing in the block, all you need to do is simply click on that space of the block. You can see the header is on the top and you can see the details of the headers. I mean, some controls of the headers here. Uh, you can see the eye, that means that you can hide it or unhide the block for printing. But basically when you start, wanna start writing the block, uh, you can just click inside. Uh, click okay. inside the block. Now this is your writing space. We call it as a craft. So craft is basically, that's your final version of your content. The left side here is a draft and I will get it later into actual real article. And I get out of this new article and I start, will start show you the actual written article. So it will be, will get better, uh, make sense to understand how it works. Okay. Now to get out of this article is very simple. You can just click here back on the back arrow and you get to the content, uh, uh, my article view. Um, also, but before I do that, let me show you quickly the controls here. When I click here, there's org details. Org details also visible on a high level. This is a place where let's say you wanna change your name of the article, you change the name here. You set your publish date. If uh, publish date, by the way, controls the sorting flow and also that link to the publish on the WordPress. Here's your folder information, complete organization here. That's why we call it as org details. So you put in the tags here, you can create, a, uh, say a tag just by simply typing and clicking enter, you're just adding a tag. That's for easy filtering and finding your product, I mean your article. Also you have a two switches here. You already know that, you notice that's a table of contents view and this one is how you wanna see on a high, on a preview, how you wanna see your thumbnail, whether it's a, just a snapshot of your writing or it could be their featured image. This is also their statuses and goals. We will get to that later. Okay. okay. 
Now let me get out of here and I will show you after the actual uh, actual article, I'll remove the filter here. Now you can see actually really my total space that I have, and actually this one is a production. It's linked directly to my WordPress. And in the WordPress, I'm creating articles here. I enhance it with all the uh, multimedia, the images, the videos, the, the, the files, the, the content. So basically all the content uh, can be enhanced inside here, inside the bloglet, and I'll simply sync it to the WordPress. Wow. Uh, yeah. That I've managed some uh, stuff on WordPress. It's that's a lot easier. What what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So let me explain what you see here, so you understand it. So as you can see, the uh, highlighted, uh, I mean, clearly visible button new. So that's the like, uh, uh, I mean, it's a highlighted red button new that's creating new articles. So this is the one that we created now. There is no content in there. We just simply created the name. Uh, but let's look at this um, already created content before, which is actually synced to my blog post. This one that says blog post uh, content marketing versus content management and marketing strategies. So this is my blog, actual real blog post, which is posted on a website in my blog. Uh, here you can see what the uh, folder was attached to blog content for Blogly. And this is uh, the word, uh, word count, is at 2,147 words. Okay. So this is a published date when it was published. That's important. I have a check mark that means this already has been published and synced to the WordPress. Like this one particular, it's not yet published. Even though the published date is there, you, you see there is nothing. Uh, 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 no check mark is here. This one is pending in the production. There's a 10 simple steps how to write ebook. Uh, but let's review this one, uh, which is already on the website. All right. Now, so when I go inside, now you can see what I was talking about blocks. So blocks is on the oh, website. Wow. These are the chapters. Yes, uh, Tom, you had a question? No, I was just uh, saying uh, I like the look. That's, I mean, basically you've got your outline down the side. So that's, that's very useful. Uh, yes, this is the outline, by the way, it's not just an outline. This is a totally manageable. So let's say if I uh, want to take this notes and I drag it and I drop it on a, on a different place. Uh, uh, see, let me do it right now here. And I drop it on a second place. You can see how the top changes. So now this, this, this block is now taking the first, first place. And this one is a second. Like I said, table of content, it's a virtual block, which is not visible here. It's a, it's a system generated block. And I will show you how that actually look on the, on the preview. Okay. Uh, now, if I also talk about the general view on the high level, this one is the, the small icon is the preview. So if I go ahead and now preview this article, when I click here, so you could see how it's lined up. Wow. So it is a complete article, with completely enhanced with all the details. This is a table of contents. This is automatically generated. And the content is written, enhanced with all the images, with all the external and internal URLs. And also, I think it was synced with the WordPress. I also have my short codes here, uh, which is perfectly fine. All I need to do is just specify a co the code here. And uh, I can just uh, sync to the WordPress and it will appear there. Wow. Again, same control. Uh, you yep. click on this uh, uh, arrow, going back, you going back, step back again where you were before. This is so your featured you, image, by the way. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. How do you add the featured image? Yeah, the featured image, uh, when you actually create the content, uh, you write each one block at the time and uh, uh, you enhance it with the URLs, with the images, and I will show you after how that, how to do that. But there is simply to select the featured image is a control here. And oh. among these uh, options, here is a featured image. When you click on the featured image, this is your featured image entry. So basically, you create a featured image and then just simply uh, 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 upload it here. It will show up. And this is your place uh, to set your alternative text. OK. Now, that's amazing. Very good. Uh, let me put back this, uh, since the, all the uh, uh, blocks are kind of independent entity, let me just move back now the notes on the top. So you could see now, oops, uh, so notes will stay on the top. So notes, by the way, are hidden. I can create any block. I can just simply hide it from printing. 
just by simply covering this, uh, clicking on this eye. If you take a look at this one here, when I hover over a header, the eye shows up. If I click uh, on this, you can see this one, these two blocks are now hidden from printing. And when I print it, uh, sync to the WordPress, this block will be totally taken out. And as soon as I remove this uh, hiding ability, so basically uh, this block will appear again on the WordPress. Oh, very nice. Okay. Yeah. Now, usually I keep the one of that one of the blocks I create specifically for notes. Uh, say I can put there uh, some additional notes. I can put my article title. I can put my uh, um, the keywords if I need to. Uh, uh, I can do. I can put anything here. Usually I use it for some other extra information that I want to keep. But because of this one is a hidden uh, from printing, it will never show up anywhere. This is just purely for my own. Now, I noticed on the preview, you had some really nice uh, graphics and charts and stuff in there. Yeah, they are right here. So basically, when oh, you yeah. scroll it, when you scroll it, you're going through the, each one block at a time, you can see the blocks are right here. This is the name of the block. You can find it here. And when I scroll it, you go each block separated here by dotted line. So when you click on a specific block, you go right inside of this block. You can see okay. the block. This is one chapter, and it, it's enhanced with additional image here. Got it. All right, now, when I go back, now this one is like a, a, a high level view of my article, very simply just creating the blocks, you keep writing, and uh, we will talk about enhancement next. Okay? okay. Now, if I go back to uh, the, the way we start, I mean, looking at this, uh, this one is a created, we created our flow, we just stay organized, we can talk about research next, but let me cover first about the uh, uh, block management, just a couple more things. So basically okay. you can see when I hover here, if I don't want to scroll it all the way to the back and I want to go specifically in the last one or any, any block, I can just hover and use this arrow. And when I go directly into that block, then I go back uh, and say, I want to just on a high level view, I just want to uh, filter specific block. If I select this block, this is the only block it will show up here. Oh, okay. And now I can select, say, couple blocks, and those couple blocks are here. Anytime I want to remove this filtering, I can just simply click here, and the filtering is removed. So just a just a quick tips. So the filtering. Let me ask a question about that. If I want to filter, will that affect preview or printing, or is that strictly no, for no, no. This working? Is strictly, strictly for working purpose. Okay. Wow. That's now, very convenient. Now, if I want to find there, let's say if I have a lots of blocks, let's say sometimes people write and they have a lengthy, say, article or lengthy content that requires maybe 30, 40, 50 different blocks. Doesn't matter, you can always find it. Say, if I start typing it here, it's a quickly filtering and searching me, filtering me the block I was looking for. Okay. So uh, when I do my dissertation and I have, 400 uh, blocks, uh, I'll be able to get where I need to go without scrolling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now also, there is a, if you notice, there is a two search um, magnifying uh, loops here, right? I mean, the uh, uh, icons. So basically, this one is for searching among blocks, and this one for searching anywhere in the content. Let's say uh -oh. if I want to find um, any word that contain uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, um, I mean, number, let's say I put I and A. So whatever was theirs, it found this particular block that contains this expression. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. So uh, a little bit like a search yeah. function, if you need yeah. to go through and change yeah. a term or something. As long as you remember some keyword that you use somewhere inside the article and you want to just quickly find it. Let's say like here is a factor. So say here I use this specific word like crowd. You see this crowd right here? When I start writing here crowd and I just click enter, now it filters me that specific uh, uh, block that contains this word. Got it. Very okay. nice. Yep. Now one more thing here is notice this one is a quick, uh, uh, quick thing. You see this arrow going down so I can shrink right. any, any block. So if I want to shrink it like this so on the block level, I can just do want to shrink it and just leave the header here. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I can do that by using, oh, I can a high level, I can just shrink everything. So 
So you can see pretty much like it is here. You can see all there the your chapters or the, all your blocks like this. Great. All right. Yeah. Now let's talk about what's inside, and I'll show you what that real true benefit of the writing with the with the um, with the bloodly and doing research with the blood. But before we get to research, let me show you first what you actually have inside the blog. So here, here is my content, right? right? When I go in the content, when I write. So it's nice to have the supplemental information that you do like you do in research. So uh, Tom, tell me how you do like usually uh, researching for this stuff. What tools do you use and how do you use, I mean, I'm not talking about blog, let's say what the typically uh, blogger use or any content creator using for research. I mean, you cannot really come up with everything from your head. You have to do your research. You have to find what's out there online, finding all the pieces, content, resources, and uh, some, other, uh, some other content that you save. How do you do it without blog? Let's say, what usually, what do you use? Well, you've hit on a real, uh, I don't know if you call it a sore point, but it's, it's a difficulty as a writer you're right. I have to create and I have to uh, provide attribution so that, you know, some of it's going to be my work. Some of it I'm going to reference other people. So basically what I do is I open up a separate Word document and I copy the URL. So I, I do my search terms. I'll go in. I'll open a URL. I'll go in, see things that I like. Okay, that's cool. So I'll highlight, copy and paste, maybe some text, paste and it in under you, the URL. And, and what you know, do you that, use? Usually, I mean, use like a Word doc, I mean, yeah. Word, yeah. Google Docs, right? Yeah, one of those two. I mean, I work mostly in Word, but I mean, Google Docs would be the same thing. I would have to have a totally separate document and then I'm bouncing back and forth and making sure I paste it in. So it works but it could be better. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now that the reason why uh, we created the extension, because I, I kind of already stuck with this mode. When I do the research, I have like 50 or sometimes 60 different tabs open on the top. I, I keep juggling, I keep cutting, pasting the content somewhere on my Google Docs, which is intended to be for research. And also I need to save the, the URL or say link to that piece of content that I yep. found. So then, because when I do the, do the actual writing, I can actually look at what content I reviewed, what I found, and what the interesting information I found, and do my own writing. In no way I can suggest that actual uh, plagiarism, say copying and pasting, no. But you have to do the, your research. You have to find the information that is out there available and put it in a nice, condensed, better format than somebody else writes. So you got to have it under your fingertips, what available, I mean, what is out there. So how Yeah, do you and you'd like to know where, yeah, uh, you know, like where know your where document you each piece relates to, right? <laughs> yeah. Which my system doesn't do. I, mean, <laughs> I just, so I hope. So let me show you the solution. So you can take okay. a look how we approach this and what, uh, what actually uh, was created here. Okay. So now uh, you can see I'm inside the, the block. So you can see the left portion, we haven't discussed it yet. This is a draft. So when I open a draft, uh, the draft uh, version, I mean, the draft option contains uh, three separate things. Is it notes, it's a libraries, and the, there are versions. Okay. We will get to the libraries and version. Let's talk about the notes first. So. When I write my content, of course, I would like to have my notes. I can put the note here. I can give a name here, say, uh, say notes, uh, whatever. And I can just simply put, I could do the copy pasting of the notes here, or maybe type just what I think, like, like some kind of supplementary notes, or maybe you know, like a post-it note to remind you of something. Yeah, yeah. Or something that I maybe I found the content, I could paste it here. So, right. Let's say, if I found some interesting information, I can just simply come in here, create a note. When the note is created, yeah, nice. It's gonna look like this. Let's say, uh, uh, let's say when I look at the notes on uh, some uh, Googling. So when I go to Google and I type, um, say, uh, uh, SEO optimization. Uh, when I do my research about SEO, I found something interesting. 
let's say I found the Neil Patel article. Uh, the step yeah, I like step. him. Yeah, I like him too. He's actually a great guy and a great marketer. So he has a lots of really good information. So let's say if I found something, of course, I could actually take it. Uh, take a, uh, say I can take a copy of this. Uh, say, let me do just a copy. Hold on just a second. So if I take, let's say if I found some interesting content, I can use it copy paste and actually I can add to the same note or, or I can uh, uh, create a new note uh, for mm -hmm. that. So you can see the notes are saved here, but there is even a better way uh, uh, of doing this. And actually granted that every note that I create, uh, let's say, um, I created the notes here. This note is linked to that particular uh, content. And not only oh. content, in my case, it's actually even linked to that, that particular uh, uh, block. So if I move from block to block, let's say if I have a separate block and I move to the separate block and come back to that one, um, my note will show up here in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the article, say here. If I go here and I assign this note, that particular block. Now this node will be visible on a block level. So you can oh. see on a block related node. So this particular node was taken for that particular block. Let's say because when I do the research, I focus one block at a time. This right. block, let's say this block is about say like high level of the content uh, marketing versus content management. So in this case, let's say if I took a note, it retains here related to the block, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, here is a be even better way. So let's say if I want to now record this information automatically uh, with, the, with the help of the, of the one specific extension. So we created this extension. Let's say here, I select click on this extension and now I can say change the article that I want to do this uh, research for. I remember there was word content marketing. Let's say if I click on the content, uh, here's, what, here's the one, the content marketing versus content management and marketing strategy. When I select this, this article showed up here. Now, okay. all I got now, this, this uh, I mean, it's as simple as it can get. You can just simply click on that button and start highlighting. You can see this little box showed up here. It's a highlight text and select done with and finished. Okay, so let me highlight some text. Let's say I highlight this text and I want to highlight maybe this text that I found. And also I like this particular um, image. Uh, maybe I can do it with the image. And you can see everywhere I started and finish it, you can see start and finish uh, my highlighted, highlighted oh, wow. pieces of content. So when I'm done going through the article, uh, let's say I'm continue doing it and I click here. And when I'm done, uh, and now I need to record it. When I click done, now this will show up here uh, in uh, this particular view. And this is a note will be saved in, the, in the, my uh, uh, content. So oh, in, okay. in my article. Now let me refresh the page here. Right now I can just show here as it, right now it's saved on the article level. And in okay. article level, you can see this one is saved. Uh, the, I mean, the notes are saved here. Let me just correct it slightly here. Uh, as you can see, this one is New York Times. It's not visible. Uh, it, it does take sometimes the, the sometimes it doesn't take the, the, the images just because it depends how it's set up on the, on the other websites. If it's a public images, those public images will be visible. And I can show you the examples where I can actually uh, take it up. Here's another example. If I do now this, uh, uh, take this particular article, and here's the example of this uh, image. Um, now I can take this and just record this one. Uh, particular research start start highlighting and now I can take this up when I'm done I can click done uh, now this one is recorded and this is not an image so let me just pull where the images are yeah here here's a uh, the backlinker article so when I do the the uh, uh, re quick um, uh, research here and I want to record this particular uh, uh, content I can just click done and now you can see this one is grabbed the image and green image showed up. And now I can click save. All these three pieces of content that I did on three different sites are now all saved here. If I refresh now my article here, when I open the draft, now 
you do not see it yet this i mean this con this uh, notes just because of there's a filter in the bottom i'm not right. sure um can you see the filters here yes i can so now for now just stick with the block related by default it just always shows block related now if i click on the article related now you could see all the three pieces of content i mean everything what i did now it's be it's saved here to link to that article with all the, the images, if the images would be available for public viewing, that image will show up here. Wow, very cool. So, so that's really good when you've got uh, like tables of statistics or like, you know, you had the kind of like the uh, pie chart there. That's, yeah, now not that's only excellent. that, not only that. Now, when you created this uh, uh, content, you save this content here. As you can see, it's also saved automatically with a link back oh. URL to the article. So you can see that here. And anytime when I wanna check, where did I find this content? Let's say this one, I wanna find where did I find it? I can just click on that link and it will open me exactly in the place where I was uh, taking this piece of content. Wow, <laughs> nice. Now, let's say when you save even more, when you save this content, now you want to, uh, you want to somehow uh, have it available in the specific blocks. All you need to do, just get in here, and this is a space here, assign the blocks. You can just simply select and just say, I want to assign to specific block that I want to see on that particular, in that particular article, so it will show up in that specific block. I can select these two blocks, and when I click OK, it will save it. Now, also, you have one more thing here. On the right side, of course, if you don't like this particular, Mm, know that you created, you can always delete it here. Okay. And also use the tagging system. Here's the tagging system. Why do you need it? Because you can always find it This uh, uh, using this tag. Let's say if I want to create this, let's say if I want to assign on page SEO, or maybe I create a uh, new uh, tag and I can just click enter. Uh, this new tag will appear right here. And when I click OK, this the uh, two tags that I assigned will appear here on page SEO and new tag. When I click OK, now it shows me here the first tag and shows me additional tag is available. Now you can always find it uh, when you go here uh, and find this tag and you'll find the by tag, it will find this particular. Uh, okay. Wow, very good. Oh, one more thing. Now let's say you wanna take this note and let's say you created this note and this note is uh, already kind of was uh, your like preliminary research and you kind of modify it and you create it. You can always just grab it like this and just move it here any way you want and just drop it and it will bring you the content. Oh. But again, I'm yeah. big, uh, I'm uh, uh, totally against the, uh, the plagiarism. Plagiarism for me is a big no, that's not the way to write article, but you have to have a content on your left side to, to create a better content in your craft. Amen, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, all right now, so let's uh, move to the next. Uh, so you understand the, how the quickly research is done using this particular extension. You can just qu quickly go from side to side. When you do that, keep recording the pieces of notes and then have it available on your left side, uh, right next to your article. Like particular this particular case, you could see this one is the one image was brought up. So Can even you drag that over too? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, this one is image. Uh, for the image, uh, uh, this one is better you record it in the library. So oh, library, okay. library is would be a better choice for images. And I actually, I can show you, because right now I see the images, you cannot really drag it. And it's better not to be. So you go okay. on, the, on the library, you could see I already saved some images. And by the way, that's not only images, for, library is not only for images. You can uh, select like this one, I added the PDF files. I can add the Word files, Excel files. Uh, but of course, most of the time I use it for images because images are the one that, that enhance the article. So you basically uh, now take these images that you save here and you drop them on the right side. But let me, it's not only that. When you create an images, let's say when I do my research and I want to use the, some of the, some of the uh, images that are created by somebody else, like this particular graph. Let's say, 
for this graph, I could actually copy and say, but it's okay to copy graph as long as you have a reference and give a proper credit where you found it. So right. when you do this, uh, you can just simply say, okay, I want to take this screen, the snapshot of this image. Let's say when I save it, I provide the name of this image. Uh, I can quickly do it here. Say uh, image um, uh, test. And I can just save it in uh, into my folder. And then I can uh, reuse this image pretty much anywhere. It becomes my, uh, once I drop it in the library. So when I do this drop in the library, all I need to do, just select that image and just bring it in here. Uh, let me just modify it here. So this is the image that I created. And as you can see, this image is 294 kilobytes. So right. just remember the compression uh, and the uh, um, uh, conversion, uh, uh, conversion of images are a very important subject. A lot of cases you may be creating some images or download from us Unsplash or some Pixabay, whatever. I mean, Pixabay, you can upload, download the images, but the huge files is a big size. It's you really don't want to use big files. They load in the slow. I mean, they slow down your your loading time on the on the article when somebody reads it. So it's not good. So basically, you do the uh, conversion. We have a built-in conversion and compression. So you have a choices on the images whether you save it as a JPEG or you save it as a PNG. So by default, we save it as a JPEG, but you can always say PNG usually if you have a transparent background. So, but let's say if I want to save it as a PNG, by default, it sets the quality 70. That's about standard quality. But let's say if I want to go with a lesser quality and lesser size, because I might not need it. To, so let's say if I resize it, say at 80% and I do the quality of 40. Let's take a look what it comes up. When I do that, I see this is the image right here. It's uploaded okay. in my bucket. And by the way, once it's loaded, it stays forever. I can always find that this particular image when I go and instead of not only article related, when I select all, I can look at the all my images that I saved in the past, and then I can just pull it and use it in any place that I want and reuse it again. So nice. it's strongly suggested to use the library for your uh, for your uh, multimedia files, the the videos, the the the, uh, the PDFs, especially images. Now take a look. To bring the images on the right side, very simple thing. So when you click on that, you see an option here, copy to craft, you have an edit, you have download and delete. I don't need to explain about download, delete. It's pretty, uh, 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 pretty self-explanatory. Self yeah. But I can do that, I can show you download. We loaded what, 276 uh, kilobyte image. So now if I do this, uh, um, uh, uh, if I do this, uh, Check on the, let, let me hold on, check on the download, download the image. Yeah, so now I downloaded the image and I wanna see how this image been uh, compared to the one that I put in. Now take a look, 294 to begin with. So you see, I download two images, 23 kilobytes. So we <laughs> shrunk the image like 10 times. Uh, yeah. But on that, I use the, I use the kind of lower, lower compare, but let's see if this image may, still is good. So yeah, it's reduced the size, but it's actually still readable image, but it's a 10 times compression. So you could see that this one, you can upload quite a few, they quickly load in on the page. Anybody could read the article, they just, just, just pops up. And by the way, every image that you put in library and keep using it in the, in the, in the, um, in the article, when you push, when we push it to the uh, WordPress, uh, there is no images will be loaded on the WordPress. So basically, the, the, all the images reside in our Amazon S3 server. So everything will be loaded dynamically. You could see the dynamic, uh, dynamic images on the, wow. in the article. Now, if I take this image and copy it here, now you can see this image showed up here. Just for comparison, if I do this and just leave it as a 70% quantity, it still will optimize it. So if I do 294, and now leave 70 JPEG. Now click OK. Now you can see it loads again. Now if I do this and let me do the download, I'm gonna compare the download of this one. Uh, but I put it side by side. So you can see now, this one is pretty much the same 
right? If yeah, I go not a lot down, of difference. Yeah, there's not much really difference. But even though it's still optimized, even if I didn't change it, so you can see now this one is two, but still by default it just shrunk to 42 kilobytes compared to 294. It's pretty good compression, right? Yeah, very. Yep. So now to edit the images, you can see when I move my mouse, you can go left, center, or right. You right. can delete it like this one. Let's say if I click it, now it deletes it. Uh, or you can edit it. Why do you need editing here? Uh, uh, you need to put your alternative. Oh. That's important for SEO. Just simply do it here. And by the way, we will transfer this alternative name tag. We will be transferred into the WordPress uh, when, uh, when it will be synchronized. Got it. Now, if you want an image be clickable, so anyone would click on the image, you want to lead them somewhere, just put the URL. And now again, width, you don't control the, uh, we don't control the ratio because that's why we locked up the height. But you can control the width and we shrink the image to the size you want. Let's say if I put 300 pixels and I click OK, you can see the image is in 300 sizes. So it maintains the, uh, the ratio. ratio. Yeah. yeah. Now, notice that the border created systematically because in the settings I have set up that create a border automatically and I establish the, the size of the border and I establish the, the color of the border. Uh, let's say okay. this. No, it's automatically. Hold on. Let me do this. And I will put this here. Library. See, I put it up front. Now, it depends where you put your your um, uh, your uh, a cursor. cursor. This is where the, the article, I mean the article, the image will be placed. So if I do it if I do it here in the middle, all I need to do is just say copy and paste like this. Cool. Wow. All right. That's easy. Now, yeah, that, that, that's easy. <laughs> Any questions about this file storage? No, that's great. Oh, one thing I want to show. Also, we have the ability to, convert, to, uh, to have a total control over the video. You can upload your MP4 video, and then you will use your... Uh, you have a four chances of using, I mean, four controls. Like you want to put it in a loop, you want to add or remove the control so somebody can see the video, but you want to remove the controls, uh, controls will not be there. You remove, also, uh, you um, want to mute it or unmute it. So basically you have a full control of the video, whatever you will load. Okay. And I will That's show you nice. the actual examples that I use in my tutorials when I build it. Okay. Great. Right. So now that we went through this, um, uh, through the through the uh, the uh, library, this by the way now on a high level of the article. When I move to the article, I'm not in the block level. The same content I can see here my draft version. Here's my notes. Here's my library. Here's my backups. Okay. If I go in the notes now, I can see all the notes uh, for this particular article related. So whatever I save there it will remain. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is like a, like an Evernote building in the article. Uh, also, I will have a library. If I move the library, I can see high level library. I want to find something. I can just find it by name. It will filter and find it. Uh, I can find it by tag if I need to. Uh, also, I have a backups. Now, this one is a backup of the all article. So this is a high level backup and it's very simple. I can click a backup and it will save the backup in, um, of the article here. You can see I clicked twice. It saved two times there. Uh, I mean, it did it twice. So it, right. gives the, um, it gives the name, I mean, the, it records the date and the time. And also it has the options. I can, by clicking here, I can go into this and I can just simply delete it. Uh, I wow. also can go here and I can change the name of the backup. It does not change here the in, inside the backup, but it has everything I have in the backup. It saves it in one file. It keeps it as an extra copy. Okay. Uh, also, I have I can download it. Let's say if I download this backup, you can see then on the June 14 was there my backup. This one is a June 20 or 19. Uh, but you can see when I click here and open it, it has everything here of the. I mean the complete article is here. So I just downloaded the, the backup of the, the date of 14th. 
Uh, now, nice. it also has a, one more thing is here is a complete restoration. So if you want to restore it, it will restore the whole thing, the whole article, it's just one click, and this one is just a warning. Okay, wow. All right, so this is uh, like inside what you can do with that. Now, we didn't talk about one more option here. When you are inside the article and you want to save a version of particular block. Oh, yeah. This is why the versions are there. So now versions are just as simple as you just click the button, it will create your version. If I expand it here, you can see it's exact copy. Now, if I wanna go on the next, another article, so you can see it with the images. Let's say if I go now and I wanna save this one, I wanna save the version of this block. And, okay. and all I need to do, just click save. And now you could see that's a complete version, including everything, including the block, including the, the image and everything. Wow. Now to like restore it. it, now to take a look, let's say I make some changes and I modify, right? Now I modify something in an article. Now I say, well, I don't wanna put it back whatever I saved before, no problem. You can just click here, say click okay, it replace the complete content, puts it back. Oh, well, I have, I have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, made changes to things for clients and they said, oh, you know what? Uh, I really liked what you did before. And if I didn't think to make a backup of the previous version, it was painful. This is great. Yeah. Now it's also just remember that's a lot of cases when you write like email sequences, you write the content, you have a few different uh, uh, concepts in your head. Just keep, uh, you created one, you may not like something, you want to think, in, I don't want to scrap it. You change it, you want to keep the copy, but you keep rewriting it. Just keep saving the copies. Now take a look, I saved two copies. One was changed and another one was, uh, uh, this one is in the full, you just keep saving it. Every time I click, it saves the copy and it just keeps compiling. So you can reuse it anytime. I want to change to this version and click okay. I want to change to that one, click okay. I want to change back to that one, click okay. You see now, those, uh, those copies are changeable anytime. So wow. uh, you yeah. can actually add the notes here by clicking here. You can actually modify it here. Let's say you want to get in here, modify it slightly, tweak it for your own uh, mm. needs. You can add the name to this. So uh, my, say, primary uh, 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 version. You can do that. So once you've done this, click OK. Now you can see this one is a primary version. So it sits there. That's what you want to use. But you keep, keep tweaking your article and just keep saving it. But use it at the end. You can use whatever you need. OK? OK. Oh, I like that. Now, what's next? So versioning, it's not the same as a backup. It's a lot more flexibility. It's in the lowest level of the block. So basically, you control the chapter or say your paragraph, uh, you control the multiple uh, versions of the paragraph, you control it by keep saving it, keep tweaking it, keep modifying it. And it's just like a much more flexible version of the backup. Okay. Right. And then uh, how do I save, uh, when I'm done with something, do I just, do I need to save a um, version or? How does it no, work? versions are say no. Actually, the, it's a good good idea. Sometimes, if the content is important, you keep you may save it, a versions, but you don't have to save it because system automatically save the whatever you type in, whatever you write in. You can see the save every thirty seconds. Oh. Try to save it, uh, but also it will be automatically saved as soon as you get uh, a move between blocks. Uh, it will automatically save whatever your latest uh, 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 state was there. Uh, was the was a, of the block, and also when you get out of the the block uh, view, you can go to article view. It's always the save your your work. Okay, great, love it. Now we haven't talked about other tools. Like here's a whole bunch of tools. This is a, about the job posting, the feedback, SEO optimization, plagiarism checker, the publishing. We don't have a time to go over this, but I can quickly go over the SEO optimization so you can understand it. Why, in, why is actually, uh, uh, what's the advantages of the Blogly to use for WordPress and how to quickly and easily optimize it without even going into WordPress, okay? Okay, let's go now, for it. 
let's go for it. So, but before do, uh, do that, let me show you how, they, how we actually integrated with the WordPress. So I have a, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, tutorials, I have also the way how you can integrate with the, I mean, how you connect the WordPress. There is only okay. requir requirements, you just download one plugin, which will allow you to create the separate password for connecting the WordPress. To connect in the WordPress, you go into settings, and in the settings, you have the integration. The settings are simple here. On the right mm -hmm. side, you can open, just go into settings. In the settings and the integrations, you can connect the WordPress. When you click on the WordPress here, connect, it will, uh, uh, it will pop up like this. You can enter your website URL, and just remember the username and the password must be from application password plugin. I, like I said, I haven't explained in my tutorials. I can actually provide the link to the tutorials later. But tutorials are easy. You can find it on the knowledge base in the, on the main website of blog. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, once, that, that, uh, once the uh, WordPress, WordPress is connected, it will show here on the connected services page. And you can see the WordPress right now is connected to this web website, blogly.com. And uh, there is a button disconnect. Just simply clicking disconnect, it will remove the connection in uh, like two seconds. Uh, also has a check uh, the switch here, the canonical URL. This is a, a, in a case when, when we will be adding more because right now we're pending more integrations. We will have the uh, medium integration, we'll have a square, uh, uh, square space, we'll have the other blogger.com. So we're planning integration there as well. So we'll have the, um, we'll have the canonical uh, um, uh, uh, meta tag will be added to the place where you want it to. So okay. canonical basically identify that's your original content and that's Google treats it as a primary content who is the owner, owner of that content. So there is no confusion if you place the same article on a multiple uh, uh, platforms. Gotcha. And okay. then this button here, get the extension. That's the, uh, the, one yes. you were working with. Yeah, we just released this particular extension. That's exactly extension that was I was showing here. This is what you can use it for collecting okay. your content. So, so that's important. Uh, yeah, this one is uh, you can just simply install it, add it to the uh, to your extensions here, and it will show up on the bar here. And okay. Okay. Great. Uh, Are you going to show us how to post it to WordPress? Yeah, let's uh, let's look at the WordPress now. To uh, basically review the word, you know the WordPress. This is a WordPress view. So this is my Blogly. So you can see Blogly uh, uh, place where I can. Uh, I mean, I can manage all my like homepage there. Uh, right. Our app is built on a JavaScript React uh, framework. So we're using exactly the same latest technology what the Facebook is using. Facebook come up with the React. So. We're using the React latest uh, version, whatever. So it actually, it's quite efficient, it's fast, and that's why you see this one, uh, the blog list works really fast when it moves to so much data, but it's, it's very fast. Uh, right. But WordPress itself is a totally different animal. So it's, a, it's clunky, it's slow, it requires a plugins, it requires the all the, uh, there's making sure no conflict between plugins. Oh, it's a difficult, and plus it's difficult to, work for the blogs. So in order for you to write the blogs, you need to go in the posts, uh, create a post, and then deal with the, all the slowness and deal with the waste of your time writing all this, uh, uh, I mean, content uh, there. Like if I go into this eight, eight ways of managing effective blogs. So this is, a, by the way, a huge blog. So we're writing right now like three to four, sometimes 5,000 word a blog. So when I'm going into, uh, into this blog, uh, hold on just a second. So you could see that there is a, I mean, there's a lot of content there. So writing this content is just not, I mean, maintaining it in there, uh, doing it through the WordPress, it's just not easy. But you can see how it's enhanced, how it's optimized. So it has everything in there, all the images. And by the way, we add in X also uh, systematically, we add in this uh, additional social sharing on the bottom. We have also related post, uh, this is also automatically added. You have ability to add it. Uh, otherwise you use the plugins in the WordPress. In this, okay. in our case, we replace this plugin. We just add our own your uh, post and social sharing is available there. Okay. Okay. So yeah, but let me show you. Makes, 
kind of yeah. makes your eyes hurt watching all of that. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let me just turn it here so you could see. This is the WordPress. And if you know, trust me, that's not an easy thing to put this, all this content just like I did right now for this. I mean, you could see this uh, uh, content, but it's completely was done by without even going into WordPress. So wow. this article like this, eight ways of measuring uh, marketing effectiveness of the blog SEO. So uh, let me show you now how we do it uh, from inside the blog link. Okay. Okay, now let's go here. I'm gonna find this article. Yeah, this is the one, right? So okay. this one is, I just marked as a DA. This was my own uh, uh, kind of designation. I can always change it in our details. I can change the, the ways, but for now I just leave it so you can understand why it's, uh, I mean, what's doing it. You can see, Here's uh, some GIF images uh, we <laughs> added here, right? Uh, yep. You can see some charts, some graphs. And by the way, all of this, uh, when I open that draft portion, you can see uh, there's my, my library. You can see in the library, uh, I have oh. uh, all this stuff in library, whatever I need to reuse, all the images, whatever was there, it was uh, from library. Um, now, if I'm going into, now if I do the my, let me do some, modification so you could see how they actually contact uh, i mean how the content is flowing so let's say if i get in on this second block with them about the importance of this measurement and i can just insert some stuff i'll say you know so it will be visible something maybe like this uh let me just highlight it so you could see it uh, oops Uh, so you could see I inserted some content. Uh, let me add some couple images so you could see how quickly. Let's say I do this one and I add maybe, uh, oh, by the way, this one is MP4 video. So when I do so, that copy to craft, take a look. This is what I was talking about, the configuration. Oh, okay. I can control the auto play, loop, muted, and no controls. So totally in my control how I want the video to be presented. So let's say I want to remove all of this, just say it's going to be in the loop, it's going to be no, cont uh, no control, it's going to be muted. And all I need to do just say, if I want to change also the width, because I don't control the height, I just control right. the one, one size, I control the width, I decide how large or small the uh, video appears. I would say when I click like this, it will appear, you can see this is a video, actually, this is not the GIF. So they, they, oh, GIF, I don't know. Many people have, how do you call it? I know, I say, uh, it depends on the day. <laughs> but usually GIF and then GIF. <laughs> All right. So basically this is, by the way, this is not the, the, the GIF, it's a video. Okay. Uh, because the video is a totally control, much better control. And by the way, much lighter than GIFs. For you put in the GIFs, it's slow loading, especially if the GIF is large. Oh, it's such slow loading. So it's better off using like short videos. And by the way, from Giphy, from Giphy or some other place, you can actually convert and create a, uh, instead of GIF, you convert it back to MP4 and just use it instead of, even though you can use the GIFs, uh, but you would rather use it as a, as a video. Uh, then you have a full control over it. Okay, now let me show you. Yeah. This is what I added right into this block, importance of me measuring. So let me go back and now I'm gonna, repost my, oh, there were changes I did. Let me repost it on a WordPress. So here's very simple then. We have a tools section. In the tools, we aggregate all the tools that we built for managing your content. Uh, there is a, uh, the feedback tool, there is a SEO optimization tool, the plagiarism checker, the publishing and distribute. So let's go to publishing. So in the publishing, uh, there is a WordPress and the other Pending stuff. We also integrated this Stripe chat, but I'm not going to talk right now about this. But the Medium Blogger, uh, VIX, and LinkedIn, by the way, now available through the sharing as a social media. You can share it instead of putting it here, we'll share it through the social media. Okay. But in this particular case, let's look at the, how the WordPress, what the section WordPress. So you can go here in the second page, now entering details. All I need to do just here's already my, my, my site is connected. It's a blogly.com. Here's a slug that I, that I already created. Now, this is a two statuses, publish and draft. And by the way, this is exactly what's coming in from WordPress. 
I can turn it to draft. All I need to do is just simply select draft. If I want to publish it, it's going to be published. Right. And then I have a select uh, category. These categories are coming directly from my uh, WordPress. So just simply selected the category and I left it there as a marketing category. Now, okay. publish date, I'm totally in control of publish date. I can change the date and whatever date I want will appear in, in the uh, in the WordPress. So for now, I'll just leave it as a April 7th. This is when the article was posted. And you can see here it notes. It says here last updates was a June 19. I made some maybe changes, but this one last post date was April 8th. And this one is my post date. This is just for information only. That's the post okay. date coming from the WordPress. It already knows this article there and it's kind of in, in link to the, directly to that particular article. When I go to the next step, all I need to do is just review it. And this one is my related post section. This is the section, you know, that uh, Google always liked the, the, the internal linking. So basically, this mm -hmm. is your, your internal linking. You just click here and select the articles that you already have and you want to have them show up as your own bottom and show up as a part of your post. It will show up as a related article on the bottom of your post. So you decide what the, which one of the articles, which, which of the articles you want to show up there. And all I need to do, just click submit. And when I click submit, this article will be, uh, um, you see now it took about what? Two seconds. Now you can imagine <laughs> now, uh, you would do it through the WordPress. You need to log in. You need to wait until you're finding the page. You're opening it up. You're going inside. It's, it's, and plus it's slow. Man, now you're going to insert some images. You modify and tweak and then you click update and you wait for some time and you make sure oh it's just and it's just editing it's a for me it's just like a torture to go into wordpress so now you could see how quickly it's done now let me go to the same this one eight ways of managing content let me go to the uh the site so let's double check it uh i'm going to open but not the vp i just want to go to just want to go to uh, the site itself and I'll show you the real blog that was now edited. Now you can see I'm changing them. Uh, I'm changing, I'm going into blog. Okay, let me now okay. find it, hold on. Okay, here is the one. You can see the name one changed. The name was D8, uh, D-8 ways of measuring. So I'm gonna rechange it back again. So when I click here, let's go now inside the block and check it. Now, remember I told you about the table of content. This right. table of content is automatically, systematically generated by Blogly, always. And by the way, you have a chance of moving it anywhere in the content you want. Let's say you wanna have a first block as an introduction. It's up to you. You just simply move the table of content, uh, just drag and drop one one plug down. Got so it. now you could see there was originally was uh, this was there, but now let's go to the next block. This is exactly where we change it. You remember this? <laughs> we incorporated this XXX highlighted. Right. We added this image. We added this video. Right. Right. Now, let me show you now the the how quickly we can change it back. Now, let's say now I want to go back and now let's say I want to change it back. So whatever I did, let me hide it completely. This particular block, let's take a look. I just hide it. You can see now this, this eye close showed up. Let me go now back to the uh, publish and distribute, go to the next step. Um, now, this is the same place, right? Right. Uh, now, all I want here, okay. Now, all I want now, uh, to be republishing again and go to next and I just click submit again. Now it takes what? Another couple of seconds, I'm done. Now let me go back now here and refresh it. Now I refresh it now. This is a click on there, control F5. Uh, now you can see that. Okay, now let's get back. Now <laughs> this block is totally disappeared. Right. There's no more of this block. Now, let me put it back now. You see now, that no more block. So now, let me, let me go back and now change it back again. I'm gonna show it again. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna uh, take this, remove the eye. And now also, let me change that something here. I'm gonna take this and I'm just simply gonna 
uh, remove it. So remove that one. Now remove this one. Remove this one. Uh, yeah, I'm done. So now. And you could have done that with your version control too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it. Oh, yeah. You could, do, could have done it with the version control. Just simply bring another version and do it now again. I'm going back to tools, publish, distribute, go to the next step, go to the next step again, and submit it. Done. So two seconds. Now mm -hmm. let's go back to review it. I'm back here. I'm going to refresh it. Now done. This one is, this is the one. Importance of measuring yep. marketing effectiveness. So it's a, you are in the full control of the, the WordPress. You don't even need to go there. You can create all the images. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can optimize them uh, without even going to WordPress. And the best part is you can uh, do the SEO inside the blog. List. Let me show you quick steps now how they done SEO. So now there is a SEO for SEO. We have a separate tools called SEO Optimize. When you okay. go on SEO, this is a place where you can change your SEO title. You can put it to your meta description. Uh, you can make sure this is uh, connected to your website. Currently okay. It's already connected. Now you can uh, optimize your slug. Slug is that what goes after your domain name. So what this is a name. And by the way, the shorter, the better. But also the preference is you got to have your focus keywords and your focus keywords. It's better to be appearing everywhere it's possibly can. Now, where those focus keywords can appear, we go to the next step and I will show you the, how we do the technical SEO. Okay. So, now, uh, this one is alternate name for the featured image. So featured image appears uh, here as well, just like you can do it on the high level of the view of the article, just quickly change. Or you may not like it here. You can just quickly delete it and repost and put the different feature image. And again, I stress it out. You don't need to go in a WordPress to do that. You just do it here. Feature image, that's the only one image which will be uploaded systematically by Bloglet into WordPress, including your alternate text, including the name. So basically the whole image and the image will be optimized for to be uh, fast and light and is not heavy. It's totally shrunk to the, uh, to the best possible um, size. So you don't need to worry about overloading your media folder. So when you go to the next step, so basically this is a high level metadata details. And okay. by the way, all of this is already linked because I have a tutorial that you can use your Yoast SEO. It's probably like 15 million of people using Yoast SEO. You can integrate with your SEO. We have an integration process, how to do that. It'll take about say 10 minutes to set it up and you're done. We will populate your focus keywords. We'll populate the SEO title in your Yoast SEO. We'll populate meta description. We'll populate the slug. We will populate the featured image tag. Uh, but the best of all, when you go to the next step, we'll let you control what your keywords are. You know how many times I forget what my keywords, why I wrote the article, and then I remember, oh, I need to do figure why did I write that, and, and how to make sure that I write article which is optimized for specific target, and my target is my primary key focus keyword is a target of my article. So I need to create okay. an article which is optimized for this keyword. Very simple. You can just simply go here. This is the add keyword button. When you click here, you just select the group, if you have a group or create a group on the fly and put your keyword there. Once you put your keyword, it will appear here and will give you the information instantly. As soon as you put in, we'll tell you, is it found in SEO title? Is it found in headers? Is it found in the body text? In this particular case, 10 times. Is it found in the meta description? Yes, one time. Is it found in the image name, alternate image name? Yes, nine times. Now, what's my keyword density using a percentage and also, provides me SEO score. Now, let me show you the next, but the best part is, is the next step. So next step, it gives you the full understanding. How well are you doing for all the technical, what they call on-page SEO for the article? So this on-page SEO listing all the parameters that you need for the optimizing for the best results for the SEO. 
So now here's is your focus keyword and SEO title. You can get maximum 10 points uh, out of all these points. So basically, you have 100% here, your points, that basically your percentages. It, to be 100% optimized, you try to get as close as possible to your total 100% points. So basically, if you don't find your in SEO title, just simply go back two steps here and just put the, your keyword, make sure your keyword is your part of SEO title. Just type it in and change your name. Is it meta, is it meta description? Here it says here's a meta description. Eight points for meta description. In my particular case, eight points is given because it, it is found in the, in the meta description. Let's say you're making the changes. You came in here and you update this one, measuring uh, marketing effectiveness. This is an uh, alternate image. You just change it to make sure it's somehow correlates to your keywords. Make sure this one is a part of your keyword. Your primary focus keyword must be part of this. So when you do this at the end, all you need to do, just click on this button, scan. When you scan, it takes about literally between one to two seconds to scan everything and give you results. Let's wow. say if you don't find this keyword in your featured images, okay, no problem. Just go there. And now go to your article. Let's say this my is my this my is my image, and I need to add add the uh, keyword there. All I need to do just go here and highlight over this, and go to click edit here on this on this on the edit uh, uh, icon. In the edit icon, uh, type just type it in. What's your uh, alter in the alternate name? Just type your keyword that you wanna focus on. Just simply. Copy your keyword, copy, paste it here and modify it, tweak it so it will correspond with actual image. Like in this particular case, measuring marketing effectiveness or blog SEO set timeline. So basically, I identify this image with a set timeline, but making sure my alternate name corresponds with, uh, with my focus uh, keyword. When I go Very back cool. again here, now I'm going back into the SEO optimize go back to SEO review and just quickly scan. It scans again and populates it here. Let's, uh, let's say if I change it now, instead of effectiveness, uh, let's say I change something else, all right? When I go here and I scan it again, uh, it, will, it will actually change it and will make sure it's, uh, uh, I mean, making sure this one is reads properly, it will uh, definitely will show you the results if it's not, uh, uh, appears in the article. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This one is okay. Now if I need to get out and I want to come back again, just, I need to make sure I rescan it again. Now. Yeah. Now I'm back. So I'm here. I'm getting the maximum as I can certain because certain things I cannot get like this one and focus keyword in the headings. Yeah. I used only say one in one header. I use the keyword. So basically, it said two headers should have been like at least two headers with the keywords. I will get all the 10 points. Of course, this one is a strictly our own approach. How we measure this, we simply divide it as much as possible among all these criteria. Like for example, if your content is less than, less than say 2000 words, we prorate it and we give you out of eight possible points, you get six. Makes sense, okay. right? Okay. Yes, it does. So, so, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, now you've got all these things together. One of the key uh, areas is um, portfolios. Oh, yeah, portfolios. We haven't talked about portfolios. Okay, hold on. Let me just quickly change this one. And I can, uh, I can actually, because I, I updated this with the name. So let me just change it. I'm going to republish it again. Okay. I'm going here again. Uh, Hold on, let me just uh, refresh it. Yeah, marketing. And I submit it again. Ah, see, I changed the ways. I should have uh, leave the eight ways. So if I refresh it here, it will show me the ways of measuring. See this one right here? Right. So uh, let me just uh, quickly change back to eight ways. So let me go back here. I'm going in the name, org details, and I change to eight ways. And click OK and go to republish it again. Oops. Hmm. 
Allah'ım. Done. So you can see how quickly it's actually synchronizing with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, content. Now, how much time we've got? Very now? nice. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, we ought to talk about. Do you want to do the portfolio? Yeah, let's do the portfolio. So let me show you the portfolio. So what does it mean, the portfolio? For that, hold on just a second. Let me just close this. Uh, now, what is the portfolio? Portfolio is basically the group of articles presented in a specific format. That's it. So now, if I go back into my portfolios and here, if I start with a new portfolio, just simply say new, I give a title of portfolio, I give subheader, provide the description. I have a way of enabling public or disabling public. I can put the about section and I will show you now how that actually look like. Uh, but before I do that, let me switch to the account, which I have actually so we'll start writing the tutorials. I sign out and I sign in on a different account. Hold on just a second. Okay. So I sign in into my tutorial account. So this is my tutorial account. And I have, I have the specific articles for the tutorial. So, and by the way, it's up to you how to use uh, the, the portfolio. You can use it at your presentation of your skills and talents. Uh, you can put your your work, uh, uh, your articles that you wrote before. This doesn't have to be an article. So any kind of content is considered to be an article. So right. if I go now, uh, uh, in my case, I'm using uh, this particular portfolio as you're using as a blogly knowledge base. So when I go into knowledge base here, this is uh, all the setups, what I have now. I just give a name. This is a blogly knowledge base. I give a subheader, all-in-one right. content marketing software for content creators. I give us some description. The description is basically for me. Uh, this one is, uh, this is what I see on a high level right here, because okay. I might have in a, like in a, in a, uh, um, a premium account, I have a way of creating unlimited number of portfolios. It could be organized as a, a quick tutorials. It could be guides. It could be their news feeds. It could be their blogs, uh, just simple as a blog. Now let me show you how that actual, so before you want to talk, what the, how the portfolio look like. So when I click here, or I click here, it's basically the same thing. I open just this portfolio uh, outside how it actually looks for the any, oh. any user. So this is my portfolio. Anyone could have this portfolio. This is a, like a, a, my articles are listed here. This is a like preview of the article right here. This is the name of the article and this is my featured image. It looked like just like a blog and it's done for specific purpose because it's kind of useful format. Everybody will use it and everybody would understand it. So basically when you click inside, you could see how the article is looks like from inside. So articles from inside has the same table of contents. I can quickly go like this and I can uh, read what it says here and just follow the instructions. Uh, this one is, by the way, this is my uh, knowledge base. Okay. Also, you can create, uh, instead of knowledge base, you can create your portfolio of your previous work. So you create nice, you just simply uh, uh, bring it in. And by the way, we, have, we haven't talked how to bring in your content. And I can show you quickly. It doesn't take that much. It takes about two, two minutes you understand how to bring your content. Now, here is uh, uh, the... Um, uh, uh, I mean, here's a, my about information, which is visible. Well, let's say if the portfolio created for the freelancer, we could use this about, tell about myself. In my case, I just use this image as a, my, my face, but you can use any image. I mean, your face would have been here. It will tell you who you are. You can just put the short bio is here. And right. also in my profile, when you click to my profile, it would be opening in my profile. Actually, I could show you that more like pre-made content on this page. Hold on just a second. Uh, let me just open another one so you could see how that, um, how their portfolio may look like with their profile. So here's another portfolio that I have. This one is kind of resembling the freelancer portfolio. You could have your articles listed like this. This is a list format. Uh, right. Anyone could read the articles and see how well you're doing your work, how well you're writing. So basically you get in inside and you can read it. Notice here is a button as a messages. You can actually, anyone could message you just clicking oh. on it 
on the bottom. Inside the portfolio, right? Inside I mean, just... the portfolio, right. So wow. your, your communication will be on the level of your portfolio and you could see it inside the blogger. Now, this one is my profile. Whenever anybody could see this, I mean, let's say somebody enters your freelance portfolio, they could see your work and also they can go into your, uh, your um, profile. Your profile must say who you are. This is your username. And this is your who you are. Let's say you're content creator or you maybe a marketer or maybe you are the journalist who writes and creates the beautiful content. So this one is the like short bio explanation about yourself. And this one is a long explanation. This okay. one could be as long as you want to. You could have it as a 10 pages down and put in, <laughs> this is a rich format, just like a, like a blog. You create this as a rich format. It is, will be with the images, with videos, whatever you want to say. It's like your, your own homepage, who you are. And this one is your skills. And on the, higher, on the upper right side, you can see what are you charging per 100 words. We chose okay. that 100 words is kind of your a measurement stick. So if you want to measure how much you want to get paid per, uh, it's better not to be like in a thousand words because hold on, maybe you, I mean, somebody requests just a few hundred words article. So basically the measurement stick is per hundred words. It's equal. Okay. It's yeah, that product. makes sense. Uh, you just simply say how much you charge per hundred words. Somebody wants to do business with you. They can just click on the image, put their name, uh, put their email. Let's say somebody put some wrong email. The email is invalid. Let's say I put some kind of email, gmail, say gmail.com. And I can just say, my name is Gennady. And I can just simply go in here. And now I can have a way of uh, writing you a message. My message can consist of, I mean, the same. I can do the full rich text format message. I can include the images if I need to include the files. And once I'm done, uh, I can just click OK. Uh, this email, this uh, message will be sent to you. So this is uh, uh, on the level of your profile. You can keep communication going between one one on one with each prospect who will stumble on your uh, portfolio. So your portfolio have a flexibility. You may disconnect the profile page or opposite. Maybe you want you don't want to show your portfolio. Just have, simply having a profile, you have that flexibility. It's very simple. Well, when when you go inside the portfolio. Uh, you can have a chance to decide, configure whether you want to have the visibility of my portfolio and profile, or you can just have a one portfolio only or profile only. Mm -hmm. And also you have right now, we just have four different templates, block card view, block list view, news feed, and I can show you each one. Let's say if I select news feed and I click here, this is how the news feed look like. So newsfeed is a number of articles all listed by in a, in, a, in a sequential order that you create. Every time you write a new article always will show up on top. So if you want to have this format, this format is for you. Just use this format. Let's say I'm changing now to tutorials and guides. Now, if I go now in tutorials and guides, and open the same uh, portfolio. So you could see now I'm in the tutorials and guides section. And also we have a way of the... the Search is actually Searching. quite yep. details. It goes, finds anything, even up to blocks and gives you the, uh, uh, gives you the message, even on the blocks level, it will give you the, provide you the, uh, your search results. You can actually filter by like this here. So it's more like a tutorial type and mm -hmm. you can just remove a filter like that. So this is a tutorial view. And again, if I go back and say, I want a blog list view, and here is the blog list view. It looks like this. Yeah, that's so, nice. I mean, from a visual standpoint, this is more appealing. Plus, uh, as a person who's interested in your work, I don't have to download anything. I don't have to go to a website. If yeah. I want to contact you, I don't have to open up my email. I mean, I can just... You can just simply send this here. link. So basically, you take this link, when I go here, you copy this link right here. And by the way, in my portfolio, I whitelisted my portfolio and that's available on the premium accounts. Whitel whitelisted means I'm just set up as a my subdomain on my site. Hmm. So as you can see, my subdomain on my site is listed. When I go into portfolio, as you can see, it's my subdomain on the site. But 
let's say if I want to separate it, let's say I don't want to now subdomain, all I need to do just simply, I remove this. As you can see, it changes to portfolio.blogly.com, key article, but it's exactly the same thing. So in a free, free, uh, in a free account, uh, we're giving away free for any freelancer could have a portfolio, anyone. The only one, one, one uh, stipulation is you in a free account, you can have up to five articles. But five okay. articles is actually plenty. And uh, uh, so if you want to show up somebody how well you're doing, you can just simply, I mean, how well you're writing and what's your talent is, just simply create a portfolio, take this URL, send it to some, oh, create your, this, take this URL, put it as a part of your signature in email. So anyone who gets your email can click on that and review your portfolio, can contact you, message you on this. Or you can, in the chat, you can just use this URL and just send it in the chat on the say in the Facebook Messenger or anyone on there, maybe on the Twitter, just put it as a part of the, your, your message on the bottom. Just simply include the URL to your portfolio or your profile. Let's say your profile is, uh, um, has a lot more information like this one. Say if uh, this is like, this is your profile and you have a completely all information, how, what you do, who you are uh, uh, and what it's all about, what you're trying to do. So this is your, your way to express yourself and having a, like a business card. This is your digital business card, which you can send to anybody in just a, in a, just a matter of few different, uh, uh, few different, I mean, this is just your URL. You don't need any right. hosting. You don't need any website, separate website. So you don't bother paying for domain. You don't bother paying for hosting. All you do just simply free account. You create your profile and send it to anybody. Oh, nice. So how do I add, uh, let's say, uh, let's say I'm, uh, I want to do this and I want to create a portfolio. What, how do I get my articles into? Oh yeah. Let me show you. Now here is my, uh, say, this is a portfolio. Now I created, now, here's also, you have a chance to upload your very own logo. So you wanna, okay. you don't want a Blogly logo, just use any, your own logo. Your own logo appears. The only one difference is in your, let's say, this logo will be yours. And also, the only one thing is in a free account, you cannot change this. This is only in a premium account. Uh, right. You can remove the, uh, you can remove the labeling here. So the powered by Blogly will remain. But other than that, that's yours. So basically, you're already, now, how quickly you can get your portfolio set up. Let me give you that quick example. So let me do this. I'm gonna create now into this my my portfolio. I'm gonna create a portfolio right in front of your eyes, and it takes about say three to five minutes, and I will have a few articles there. Let me do this. Okay. All right. Now let me go back, and now I'm gonna use it my my blog, and I create out of my blog. I create few few articles. Okay. Right. Now let me take this. I'm gonna take content marketing and, the, uh, and this. I'm gonna click on this blog. Let's say I created for someone. And by the way, it doesn't matter where this blog is resides. You can just simply, even if it's not your, your con, I mean, not your, I mean, it has to be your content. But it, let's say you wrote for your client and your client right. has its own website. Now, you can present it as your work. You cannot sell it. That's not in video, and it's, it's, it's just a part of your portfolio. Just take the copy of this blog post, go back into, go back into your account, just say click, but instead of clicking new, you can just go and import it. You can just click, quickly click here, and then we can import in a few different options. You can do it through Google Docs. Many people have a Google Docs. And by the way, it's actually a great option because you might have a Google Doc with images, with everything. we can bring in everything in just a few clicks. Now, if you have a blog already created somewhere else and you wanna just report, take this from this URL, no problem. Just use this, create new article by using this URL link right. and just select okay. That's only one thing you need to do. Now, yeah. let me show you. Now, it takes about, say, a few seconds and this block will appear. Now, see here? Now, this one will appear. Now, this block is exactly brought in with the table of contents and also it brought in also the the oh, uh, nice. The articles the as everything. I mean the article, their images as well. So pretty much has everything. Okay. Now, if I wanna go and now take the only one thing is it 
it's you need to also I mean put in your own featured image. So when okay. you do your own featured image, just put in your own featured image. But let's say this article is right here, and now uh, I want to now put. Let, let me do this. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, content marketing. That's this one, right? So right. if I want to bring it on the top, uh, I can do it in the org detail. And if I set it as a, let's say, I put it some published date. Uh, this published date, making sure this article will stay on top. You can see now the published date keeps it on top. So it. when this article is there, let me just bring one more article. And I can do it from the Google Doc. So let me do this. I'm going to get in here. Let's do it Google Doc. And I get in the Google Doc. Let me just get into my uh, Google Docs. And we integrate it with the Google. So you can just quickly select your um, one of your Google Docs that you keep your, your articles uh, already prepared. So many people do. So let me do this. I'm just going to bring, uh, say, this one, my uh, Blogly press release. I can just select this. And you can see this one that shows up right here. And right. all I need to do, just click OK. Now, this uh, press release, the only one thing is press release. See, this, it's showed up right here. This press release has only one block. So basically, you need to make sure that you have the, uh, uh, the headers inside your block as a listed as a H2 headers. So if mm -hmm. it's H2 headers, we automatically create the blocks for it. Got so it. Like in this particular, has only one single block. So in order for me to like, again, split it up, I can just simply create headers inside my article and I'm done. And then you can just simply bring in as a Google Doc. So you can see in a matter of like two minutes, I brought in two different, uh, two different uh, um, uh, blog uh, uh, articles, right? One in there by importing and another one is by importing a Google Doc. So let me just change this one. I can change it directly from here or details. Let me just set the published date also somewhere here on top. So it will keep it on the top. So now when I go back to my, my content, hold on, uh, you will see now my two, two of the ones that I brought in, they are here on top. I okay. don't have the featured image, but for now that's okay. But actually let me just quickly put some featured image. So let me do this. I'm going to get in inside, just go in and see and then bring the featured image and then just going to add something there so uh let me just pull up something um say i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go into my tutorial and i'm gonna bring some of the my featured images that i use here uh, uh, let me just bring this one in uh, and i can just simply click okay so now you can see this one is just brought in this particular image i can put the alternate text but it doesn't matter right now so you can see when I go back now, this featured image shows oh, up. Oh wow, that's fantastic! Yeah, now let's do this. Out of these two articles, let me create now quick portfolio for those two articles, and I do it directly. I mean, exactly from scratch. I can just say new. Uh, I can just call it my portfolio, and I can put some header, say my work, or say my best work. Uh, description, I don't care for now. This one enable public, yes. About section, uh, here is uh, the info about me. And I can leave this one alone. Right. Now, I don't need to set the URL for logo. This is a, if I want people to go somewhere when they click on logo. Now, this one enable donation. Uh, this one will just bring in the button and uh, we'll be enabling donation, but I don't need to worry right now about so this. So that's like, uh, uh Pa uh, patron is that it? Yes, it's like a patron. So basically, yeah. when we bring in right now, we don't have yet payouts integration, but we will have in the next few weeks. We'll have a payouts integration. All I need to do just connect your pay, uh, like PayPal account or say Stripe account. You create a Stripe account, and then you can just simply anyone who likes your content, you could set up your donation, and you I mean you, don you can uh, turn on your donation button. Whoever wants to donate, like you can just buy put it like buy me coffee or something. Also, anybody who wants to donate, you can just keep writing. And if someone has an access to your portfolio, they can read it. And if they like it, they can just pay some money if they want. Right. Now, I like that. Yeah, this one is you select the template as we discussed. Let's say I set as a block card view. Initial page would be portfolio. And the set visibility, 
Well, now I just put my portfolio and profile, even though I didn't set the profile yet, but that's fine. Now, this is it. Now, do I need to do, I need to do anything else? Yeah, one more thing. Now, I just need to select the here is the articles, which articles I want to have in my portfolio. I can do it in two ways. I can do it in uh, just simply clicking here and selecting what my folder is. So let's say if I sign the folder for those okay. articles, but I didn't yet, I just simply brought in. But let's say I just do it manually. I just click OK and just find um, measure, whatever, whatever I had there. Which one? What articles was there? Content oh, yeah. marketing. This so one, that content one. marketing, right? And then your press release. And my press release. But let me do this first. Content marketing. See, I connected content marketing. Yeah. And let me do the press release. Did I do that? Press yeah. release? Yeah. Here's Blogly press release. It is version three. Yeah. Yeah. So now I did two. Now. Remember this, when you click here, uh, you can find, you can see some uh, suggestion and the help, quick help. Only articles with the status completed or archived will be visible in portfolio. So open does not automatically show up. So you okay. need to change the status on this and go to right directly from here, go work details and say, yeah, I want to have it at least close status. And I just, uh, hold on just a second. Let me do this. Let me get, yeah, here. Now go to work details and change uh, change this one to archive, and I click OK. Now you can see that two status is open. My portfolio is ready. Now are you ready to view it? I'm ready to view it. Let's let's uh, push the button. <laughs> yeah, you can do it from here, or you can just copy this URL and put it. But let's do it from here, and that will open your portfolio. Here it is. I just entered the oh. one uh, image, and I didn't just put the didn't add the, any featured image here. But you can see. Uh, how it looks like two articles are there. I can get in an article. You can see this one is a complete my uh, oh. without any even images, but this one had an image. So when I click here, now take a look how it's actually uh, uh, how the content is being displayed. And those okay. are actually the arrow showed up uh, from my blog that that was a custom made. So I'm just showing here this with the arrow, but uh, you can see now I even okay. have everything. So your content is visible fully with the, um, with all the all the table of content. So basically, without doing anything, you brought in fully uh, featured. Uh, you see here, fully featured uh, article, right? I mean, fully enhanced article with all the images and everything. That's amazing. So how cool is that? That is amazing. So obviously, the question is, how does someone get started? With okay. this, I mean, I'll get started. Very simple. So you go into the uh, Blogly page. Uh, I mean, uh, Blogly.com. You can just simply uh, go here on the main uh, main view. You'll pretty much anyway. You can find uh, this button uh, right on the top. Start free, and you can just simply clicking on this button. Uh, you can go into the um, uh, the. Uh, creation of their, uh, their account. So okay. when you go, when you enter the account, let's see here, I'm going to log in, hold on just a second, let me just refresh this one. Um, so when you go into the, uh, when you go into like here, I'm going to like, see, I'm already logged in. So when you get to this page, you have a, uh, here is a link of whether you sign up. So in the sign up, all you need to do is must be unique if you put something, we double check this name is unique. Okay. And, uh, and then you put your email, password, confirm password, agree, and you done. So basically you create your free account. Uh, it's always free. Uh, we, do not, um, we do not charge for, I mean, we do not have a plans for uh, making this particular account. Uh, see, let's go to Blogly again, hold on. Uh, our, not the WordPress, hold on. It likes WordPress. <laughs> no, actually, I connected directly to WordPress. So um, uh, when you go to pricing, so you could see we have a basic account. It's always free. So uh, in a basic account, you will have a ability to create five articles. You have ability to create and manage one portfolio. Um, you don't need to pay for any hosting. Uh, you have a... Uh, public profile page also available in the portfolio. 
and you have some limits on uh, how many nodes, research nodes you may have, and how many, how much attachments of space you Got need. It. Uh, but you have also the messaging in the portfolio, and you have ability to sell articles directly from your portfolio as soon as we turn on this feature. This feature is wow. uh, just about uh, in the next uh, few weeks ready to be released. So you'll be able to create and sell your content directly from the Blogly or directly from your portfolio. Wow, that's amazing. Well, listen, I think uh, I'm going to check out here and sign up. Yep. And I encourage uh, everyone who's been watching this to uh, do the same. I mean, uh, particularly with the work from home uh, uh, that has taken over as part of the coronavirus, more people than ever are comfortable working with freelancers and uh, uh, you know, having a portfolio that best shows your work is going to make a difference and get you more uh, clients and more money. So thank you very much, Gennady. This thank you, Tom. And uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody.